Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I have put together some of my favorite Dollar Tree tumbling tower block DIYs that you can use to create as gifts and also to decorate your home. Now these projects are all put together in one video for a one-stop shop to inspire you to make some really great projects and all of the links to the original videos are in the description box. Now as always, I have included the supply list as well so you can use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now before we start, I have to say hey, hey to all of my subscribers, and if you're a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well, and stick around to enjoy these crafts and all of the ways that you could style these in your space. So now, let's jump right into the projects. Now we're going to need about a box and a half of these tumbling tower blocks for this project. And we're going to start with our Sherbonder silicone mat and our blocks that are already stained with my Jacobian Memwag stain. So what I'm going to do is I am going to lay out and determine the size of the three boxes that I want for my planters. And I'm just kind of getting an idea because I do want them kind of staggered. So what I went with is a six block set and we're going to be needing four sets of six blocks. And the second one, we're going to need eight blocks and we're going to need four sets of the eight blocks. And the third container will be 10 blocks high and we'll need four sets of the 10 blocks. So using my carpenter square, we do want to go ahead and start bonding these together side by side, just as we did before, making sure that you flip them over as you go and wipe away any of that hot glue that oozes out of those seams. Now here you go, here's one of your six block sets and you're just gonna repeat this for your remaining three six block sets. So by this time, you are a pro. So now you're just gonna continue to make the rest of your block sets and here is your four sets of eight and here is your four sets of 10. So the last pieces that we'll need for this project is three sets of two together. So we're just going to glue three sets of two blocks together side by side. So now it's time to put our containers together. So we're going to start with the six block high container. We're just going to lay a one piece down and grab one of those two block pieces and glue it to the very bottom flush with the bottom forming an L shape as shown here. Now the next piece, we're gonna grab another six block piece and place it along the side covering up that L. So apply a, a bead of glue along that exposed edge and place that block set right on top. So now grab your third six block set and we are gonna place it on the opposite side. So I'm just checking the fit and then you can add glue alongside of that block and right on the inside of the base part where the glue, where the block set will be applied and just push that right into place. It should fit in there nice and even. And then our final piece will go right on top and this will close up our box. So apply some glue to the exposed seam and place that six piece block set right on top. You just wanna press down, make sure everything is nice and even. And here is one of our V sets put together. So now I'm just gonna go in with my stain and cover all of the exposed edges of those blocks. Now, once that's all stained and everything, you can set this to the side to dry. So now all you have to do is repeat these steps for your eight and 10 block sets. And now all of them have been bonded and dried from their staining. So now you can add any kind of greenery, florals, or succulents that you like to decorate. And here are my three planters on display. And wow, I'm loving the look of the onion grass. Now these grass bundles were from the Dollar Tree as well and they perfectly accent these wood planters. And this Jacobian stain remains the star of the show but any of these can be painted as well. So now you can switch the order and play with the arrangements however you like. 
Now, if you're not crazy about onion grass, how about flowers? Now, these clover flowers look amazing in these vases, and they're perfect for a neutral farmhouse look. Now, they were only 97 cents from Walmart, so that's a definite bargain as well. Now, these look so soft and pretty, and I just absolutely love them. Now, another great look would be for candles. All you have to do is flip the containers upside down and you have the perfect platform for a votive sized candle. Now, I can definitely see these displayed on a bath vanity or shelf. It's just so relaxing. Now, if you really want to have a little bit more fun with these, you can start by adding one flat and adding the other two on each end to create an eye catching tear display. Project, we're going to be needing a pack of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to lay out my Sherbonder silicone mat to work on, grab all of my little blocks, and grab a carpenter square that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now the first set of blocks we're going to be bonding are seven block sets. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make six of these seven block sets, and to bond these together, we are going to bond them side to side just by applying some Sherbonder wood stick hot glue in between them and pressing them tightly together. Now you also want to make sure that as you bond these together, you do want to flip the sets. It makes them nice and even and wipe away any hot glue that may ooze out of the seams as you go. Now here is one of the seven block sets all put together and we're going to continue this until we have six complete seven block sets as shown here. Now the next set of blocks we are going to join are two block sets. Now these will be stacked on top of each other. Now we're going to make four of these two block sets. You just add some of that glue right on top and stack the other one. Use your carpenter square to make sure the ends are nice and even as well. And then we're going to continue this until we have a four complete sets. Now the next set of blocks we're gonna make are some four block sets. Now these are made similarly to our two block sets. We'll be just joining two of those sets together. So we're, again, we are gonna add it on the flat side of the block and we're gonna stack two together and then we're gonna stack another two together. Now you do wanna definitely make sure those ends are nice and even, so make sure you use your carpenter square and you can bond them together end to end. And if they're flat, they should fit together without any gaps. And this is one of the four block sets, and you want to continue this until you have four complete sets. And then finally, the last set of blocks we're going to make are some six count block sets. And this is just three of the two block sets joined together, just like we did before. And here is what one of those six block sets looks like. And now we're just going to continue this until we have four. So now that all our pieces are done, we can start building our stands. Now I'm gonna take two of those seven block sets and join them together side by side. Just apply some of that wood hot glue in between them, press them tightly together until they are bonded, and then do that for the remaining two sets. So you'll have three complete sets. So now what we're going to do is take those tops of our little stands. Now you could stain them if you like to, but I'm for this, I'm going to use some Waverly Antique Wax for this project. Now I'm just going to apply this Waverly Antique Wax all over the top, the bottom, and the sides of this piece. And this is easy to work with, it's water soluble, and it's a good alternative if you do not want to use alternative, uh, if you don't want to use regular stain for your project. So this is what one piece looks all completely stained. Just repeat this for your other two until all three are done and then let them sit to completely dry. So now we can go ahead and stain all of our other sets that we have and we are not going to be using stain. We're going to be using Waverly, um, I'm sorry, the folk art chalk paint or any chalk paint of your choice. I'm just using the color white. Now I'm just going to paint all of the sides white and then let them completely dry, making sure at least one end of that block set is, is not painted. So now that everything is dry and ready to go, we can start bonding them together. You're just gonna take that unpainted side of your block set and you're gonna place one on each corner of that flat piece. Apply a generous amount of that hot glue on that raw end and just press it firmly into place on each corner. Just make sure you wipe away any of that hot glue that oozes out of the seam as you go. And you see here is one of the little stands and I think it turned out awesome. 
Now we're going to repeat this for the other two and now we have three complete stands and now all you have to do is take these and decorate them however you like. And here are all three of my stands on display and I think they really look super cute. Now I'm totally loving the contrast of the white with the rich color of the antique wax in these three pieces. And the different heights give you a visual appeal for this set. Now I really love that you can switch these stands around however you like. Now this makes it easy to balance your decor in different sizes on these pieces. Now you can even stack these stands up too. Now this is such a great idea for those small decor trinkets that you may have to put on display. And these stands are really nice and sturdy, so no worries about it tumbling down when placed on a level surface. And of course, using these in the bath would be very useful. Now you can display your accessory jars, lotion, hand soap pumps, and many other bath items on these stands. You all have to let me know your ideas on how you would use these jars and these stands in your space. Now we're going to need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and one of these trifle bowls from the Dollar Tree. Now we're going to start by gathering up our supplies with our blocks and grab a carpenter square. Now we'll be joining two blocks together as shown here to go around our bowl. So we're going to start adhering a bunch of those together. Now when you do join these together, you do want to make sure you wipe off any hot glue that oozes out of the seam. Now in order to determine how many we need, what I did is took a strip of paper and I'm wrapping it around the circumference of the bowl. Now once I get that measurement, I'm just going to lay my paper down and then just start laying out our two block pieces along that strip until the whole thing is covered and that way we know we have enough to go around our entire bowl. Well, when it did reach the end, I needed 29 set two block sets. So now we're going to take all of our two block sets and we are going to stain them. And I'm going to use some Waverly antique wax. You can certainly use traditional stain or paint or whatever kind of finish that you like. And then I'm just going to go ahead and apply this to all the sides of the two block sets, including the ends of each one. Now we're just going to repeat this for all of our block sets and allow them to completely dry. So now that they're dry, we can start to add them to our bowl. So go ahead and remove any tags or labels that are attached to the bowl. Now when we add these, we want to add, uh, add them where they'll be staggered. So we're going to slightly form a little overlap along the bottom of the bowl and a larger overlap at the top for that first block. Just add a generous amount of that hot glue to the back and then place it on the side of the bowl. Now you certainly can use E6000 or Gorilla Glue or whatever type of adhesive that you prefer. So once we have that first one there, we are going to take that second one and this one, we're going to um, have this go a little bit lower than the first one, but still over that top lip of the bowl. So once you figure out that placement, go ahead and add your glue and then place that second one right in place. Now for the third one, this one, we're just going to add our glue and this first one will be in alignment with that first block set that we added and this will continue to form our staggered placement. 
Now we're just going to continue this all the way around the bowl until it is all applied. Now here is it. Here it is at the halfway point and then here it is at the full coverage. Now we notice there is one slot left and I needed to make one more two block set for this and it actually is a little bit too wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape one of my two block sets to my little miter box saw that I have here and I'm just going to cut off about an eighth of an inch off the end just making sure that you make that cut nice and straight now these cut through really easy with this with this little miter box and now that I've shaved that little bit off you just want to test to make sure it fits in that slot and it does fit perfectly so we're just gonna go ahead and stain it and then let it dry and we can add it to our bowl with more of that hot glue and there it is it fit perfectly into place and now our bowl is fully covered so now what I want to do is go ahead and paint the bottom of the bowl and I'm going to use some black acrylic paint. Now I did decide to do this last because I didn't want to mess up the paint job while I worked on the wood trim, but this is easily uh, able to access with a paintbrush and you just want to apply one nice coat on there at first and then make sure that that completely dries. Now once that first coat is applied, let it dry and then you can add a second coat on. And once both of those dry, add a little Mod Podge to protect the finish. And here it is all done with all of our layers on there and this is your bowl and now you're ready to decorate. Now once it dries, you can fill and decorate your bowl with the greenery of your choice. Now I absolutely love the way that this turned out and the beautiful design of the wood looks amazing on this piece. And the black stand can definitely be seen underneath too. Now I use some eucalyptus in this planter but these would look great with other varieties as well. Now how about using some succulents in a white rock filler? Now these succulents are from the Dollar Tree and they make the perfect accessory for these. Now you can opt to use real plants as well since this bowl is waterproof. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Now we're going to need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. And we're also going to need three of these wood trays from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to start off by laying out my silicone mat. And you want to go ahead and grab those tumbling tower blocks. And we'll also be using a carpenter square ruler. You can also get this from the Dollar Tree. So the first set of blocks we're going to be putting together is in the shape of a square as shown here. Now we're going to be making 10 of these four block sets. Now for this project, I will definitely be using the wood glue and you can use the Gorilla Glue or Dollar Tree wood glue because we want this to be super duper sturdy. So what I'm doing is I am bonding together all of those tumbling tower blocks in the shape of the square as I showed you before and making sure that we use a generous amount of that wood glue. Now once all of our pieces are bonded together, we just want to squeeze them tightly in that square and go ahead and wipe away any excess glue that may ooze out of the seams. Now we're going to go ahead and make 10 of these and allow them to completely dry. So now that we have all our blocks made, we're going to take um, five of those squares and we're going to lay them in a diamond shape as shown here, just overlapping that one little edge. Now we do want to make sure that these are bonded together pretty straight so I'm going to grab a longer stick just to make sure I can keep these nice and even. Now once they're as even as possible I am going to be taking that wood glue again and I'm going to be bonding just the corner of that square that connects to the other square as shown here. Now the width of the connection is the width of one of the tumbling tower blocks and we're just going to repeat this all the way down the line until all five of the squares are bonded together nice and straight. And then we're going to repeat this for the second five piece set of blocks. So now we have two sets and allow them to completely dry. 
So once they're dry, they are nice and sturdy, and now we could start marking the blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my trays and I'm gonna lay them on their side on top of that block set. And what I'm trying to do is get an idea of the spacing. And I ended up going about five and a half inches apart, but you can choose the width that you like. Now, once they're in their place, I'm taking a pencil, I'm marking the top and the bottom edge of that tray so I'll know exactly where to place it. Now once I mark all three trays, I'll have an open area where that tray will sit. Now in that open area, I want to put a piece of painter's tape because I want that raw wood to be bonded to the tray and not a painted surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put painter's tape on all of the areas where the tray will touch the rack rail on the side. And then I'm just gonna flip over that set, trim off all of that excess painter's tape off the edge. Now if we flip it back over, we can see where our line is and we can use this as a guide to mark our second rail. And we're just going to transfer those marks over and add the tape the same way. And now both of them are marked and ready to paint. So we're going to set those to the side and we're going to start to work on our trays. Now I wanted to cover up those holes so I'm taking some of these craft sticks that I picked up from Lowe's for about 98 cents a pack and I'm going to cut them to size to cover up the holes in the side of the tray just by adding a little bit of that wood glue on the side and pressing that stick on the inside of the box and I'm going to do this for all of my trays until all of those holes are covered. Now I'm gonna take my two side rails, I wanna take them out and prime them on both sides with some Zinser 123, and then I'm gonna follow up with this Rust-Oleum Aged Gold on both sides as well. Now for the trays, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint those with some white acrylic paint or chalk paint of your choice. I think I'm gonna go with chalk paint for these. So I'm gonna grab those trays and I'm gonna grab some um, chalk paint to get ready to paint them. Now when I paint these, I, I like to start on the insides first. Just make sure you get around the inside very well. Make sure you get into the corners and the sides. Now once the inside is all painted, this is what it looks like, and now just paint the outside. Now you repeat this for the remainder of your boxes and allow them to dry. So now that everything is dry, grab your boxes and grab those side rails. And we can go ahead and remove that painter's tape that we marked for the location of our boxes now that the paint is now dry. And you could see where the raw wood is and now we know exactly where to align our trays. So I'm gonna lay one of the pieces up with that raw wood side up and I'm gonna place my trays right back into place where we marked with our painter's tape. So now we're gonna use our grid mat as a guide to make sure our trays will be nice and straight and even. And then once we decide it's very good and it's set right, add a generous amount of that wood glue on all of the raw portion of those side rails and place a tray right on top of it. Now we're gonna do this for all three of the trays. Just be generous with that wood glue and once this dries, it'll be super secure and in place. Now once the base level is already done, we can add the other rail. So I'm just adding more wood glue to those raw edges on the second piece, flip it over and align it nice and even on the other side. Now to make sure this is super secure, I am going to add a piece of parchment paper over the entire thing. I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap wood to put on top of it and add a weight on top to make sure everything is bonded and let it dry overnight. And once you dry this overnight, it is ready to display. And now after letting the wood glue dry and cure, we are ready to decorate and enjoy our shelf. Now I'm really loving this combination of gold and white and this would be perfect on a vanity. Now you can organize some makeup, some nail polishes, or even use this as a piece of home decor. It is really all up to you. 
And I just really think the metallic gold really makes this collection look amazing. You all have to let me know in the comments, how would you use this shelf in your space? We're gonna need some Timberlink Tower blocks from the Dollar Tree for this project. Now we're gonna start working on our blocks and the first set of blocks we're gonna be adhering together are six blocks. Now we're gonna make four sets of the six blocks. Now make sure you use your ruler or carpenter square and we're gonna bond these side to side as we did before. And then we are going to wipe away any glue that oozes out of the seam. And this just makes it a very nice finished appearance and the ruler helps as well. Now we're just gonna adhere them all the way down until we have a six block set as shown here. And now we're gonna repeat this until we have four complete sets. Now the second set of blocks we're going to work on are a set of nine blocks. Now we're going to make four of these sets as well, again bonding them side to side. Now you notice that I am flipping my blocks as I go and I find that flipping them keeps them more even and prevents them from getting wavy. And here is my nine block set and just repeat it until you have a total of four. So we're gonna start by adhering our, uh, our six block set together first. Now we're gonna adhere two six block sets together in the center side by side with some of that Sure Bonder wood stick hot glue. Now once that center piece is bonded, we are gonna apply one of the six block sets right down the center of that, those joining pieces, just making sure it's nice and even and placed right down the center on one side. Now once that side is bonded, we're just going to go ahead and flip it over and apply another piece on the other side to form an X. Just apply a generous amount, make sure it's nice and even, and press it into place. Now this will be one of our stands, and now we're just going to go ahead and repeat this for our nine block sets as well. And now both of our stands are nice and complete and sturdy. So now that they're done, we are going to be painting these. And of course, I'm gonna be using some of my black acrylic paint because I was going for a two-tone look. Now I'm gonna paint the bottom third of the nine block set black. Now this would mean that I paint the bottom three blocks black and I'm just gonna use a regular paintbrush I got from the Dollar Tree, make using that block at the bottom as a line to make sure everything is nice and even. And you wanna paint that bottom third all black as shown here. Now we're gonna repeat this for the six block set as well, but the third of this is only two blocks and we're just gonna re repeat that same process all the way around painting those two blocks. Now here is the bottom of both of my stands all nice and painted and just allow these to completely dry. So now that the acrylic paint is dry, I am gonna go in with my Waverly Antique Wax and I am gonna be adding this to the top unpainted version. Now I'm just going to be applying this with a cloth and then for any cracks or crevices or as you get close to that painted surface go ahead and use a paintbrush to add some of that wax on there that way you can prevent any overlap and once you add it just go ahead and wipe it with the cloth and make sure you don't have any buildup of that wax. Now we're going to repeat this all the way around on all of the unpainted areas and including the top and the bottom of the piece. Now we're gonna repeat this process for your other stand as well. Now here are our two pieces with the wax fully applied and let these completely dry. And here they are completely dry and ready to decorate for your space. So I have placed these out on display and I added some glass candle holders on top as a decorative accent. Now I'm really loving how these look with the two tone finish and they would match perfectly with the planter boxes we created as well. Now, if you don't wanna use candles, these would look just as amazing with some succulents. Now, the Dollar Tree has a really nice variety of succulents to choose from, as well as rock filler in different colors and sizes too.
Another great way to display these is by laying them on their side. Now all you have to do is just add some of your favorite faux greenery for a unique and modern table or shelf display. And I love the X pattern too and all of the fun ways that you can display these in your space. You all have to let me know how would you choose to display these in your home. Now I really hope that you are enjoying these crafts so far and I just wanted to pop in and let you know that you can follow me on all these platforms below as she so crafty. <music> We're going to need some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. And we're also going to need some of these wood cubes from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to start off working with our tumbling tower blocks that we've already pre-stained with our Jacobian stain by Memwax. Now what we're going to do, we're going to also use our carpenter square to make sure everything is nice and even as we go. So we're going to gather up two sets of three blocks and we are going to join them together as shown here. Now what we'll end up doing is making 20 sets of these six block sets as shown. Now to glue these together, we're just going to um, add hot glue to the side of each block and bond them together. Now you do want to flip them as you go. This just makes it very even. Now we're going to make two sets of three blocks glued together first before bonding them together. Now once we have our two sets of three, we're just going to rotate one set um, the opposite direction until they're bonded together in the center as shown here. Now we're going to do this 20 times for two sets of boxes. So now that we have our two sets, I'm going to put four blocks to the set and that'll be the two bottoms of two of my boxes. So now what we're going to do is take two of the blocks and I'm going to apply hot glue along the side, bonding them together and having the pattern rotate as shown here. Now once you make one of these, we're going to continue to make eight of these to make our two boxes. So now that we have all eight sets, these are the sides of our boxes, so we're now going to work on the bottom of the box. Now to join these together, we'll need two additional uh, blocks in the center, and we're going to use this as a spacer. So go ahead and bond two blocks end to end first, and then take that two block set and bond it to one of your six block sets that you already made. Now once that's bonded, then we'll finally bond that last six block set at the other side. Now this is one of the completed bottoms of the box and you just want to repeat this for your second one. So now that we have our two bottoms together, what we're going to do is start to put together our box. So gather four sides and one bottom and we can start assembly. So we're going to grab the bottom first and we're going to put one of the sides on the short ends up on the box. Just, just add some hot glue to the bottom and you want to line this along with the edge. Now this is on top of the block set. Now we're going to add the two sides on top of the bottom and they will be bonded to the side and the bottom. So you want to make sure you add hot glue to two sides of this block set and press it against that block set that you've already adhered into place right on top of the bottom. And you want to repeat this on the other side. So now that we have the three sides in place, there is a tiny gap at the bottom where this last piece will fit into place. So just add hot glue along those two existing side pieces and then add hot glue to the bottom of the the side that you will just add, slide that into place and press it securely. And now you have one solid box. Now as an accent, I have four of these cubes that I've already pre-stained and I'm going to add one in each corner as little feet for my box. Now this is totally optional, but I think it just makes it look like a completed box. Now I'm tossing it around a little bit just to show you how sturdy this wood stick hot glue is. It's not going anywhere. So now I'm just going to take my stain, stain all the exposed ends of the blocks, and this is the completed blocks with all of the stain in place and everything looks really good. Just go ahead and repeat this for your second set. And now you have two block boxes and they are ready to decorate. So now I've taken some of my favorite clover flowers and I've added them to the containers and they look great. 
Now I've added greenery, you can add flowers. I think they all really make the wood shine in this project and I just love the combination. And I also really love the visual appeal that this block design gives in these pieces too. And I think these little feet just amps it up just a little bit to make it a little more high end. Now if solid greenery is your thing, I love eucalyptus bundles, they're also an option. Now you can use these for your office supplies, your coffee station, makeup brushes, or with any small items you need to display in style. Now we're going to start with these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm just going to go ahead and protect my work surface. I'm going to grab my carpenter square and go ahead and grab those blocks. Now we're going to be putting these in order three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this is the order I will lay out my blocks. So we are going to start off with laying out three. Now I will be bonding these together with wood glue. You could use Dollar Tree wood glue or Gorilla wood glue. It's your choice. And we're going to join these end to end. Now since this is a hanging decor piece, I wanted a little bit of extra security. And this is why I decided to go with wood glue besides wood hot glue. So once that three row is done, we're just going to make sure it's nice and straight. And then our next row is four. So we're going to go ahead and lay out four blocks and then join those end to end with that wood glue as well. And now we're just going to slightly tilt up that first row. We're going to add some wood glue to that edge and just make sure it's nice and smooth. And I just moved it out with my finger and then I'm going to bond that right in center of the four block row. So now the next row is going to be five blocks and we're going to join that to the bunch. The next row, six blocks, join that one on there. And then we're going back to five blocks, join that to the next row. Then we're going to join a four block set, a three block set. Then we're going to join two blocks and then the final one block. And this is what it'll look like if you followed the pattern on the right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add blocks along the bottom. And if you notice, the pattern is 7654321. So we're going to start with the first letter, which uh, first layer, which would be seven blocks. And we're going to lay those up on their side. Now, once you have their placement, go ahead and grab that wood glue and we're going to start to apply each one of the blocks in place. Now, one good advantage of working with wood glue, it does give you a considerable amount of working time so you can make sure your blocks are just right before that glue dries. Now, once all your pieces are glued into place, you have your base layer. So now the next row is going to be six blocks. Now we're going to add those six blocks on their side right on top of the, the seven block set. You want to make sure that they're centered on the blocks right below them and glue those into place and this is what they'll look like. So the next row we are going to do is five blocks and then add those five blocks on the center and then glue those as well. So our next row is going to be four blocks and we're going to add four blocks on top of that all the way down three two one and this is what it will look like so now what we're going to do is just rotate it around and we're going to trim off that top edge now all i'm going to do is grab six blocks and i just want to form like a slight curve across the top just to cover up those jagged edges now i will be laying these blocks flat on top so i just want them to slightly overlap the edge add that wood glue along the edge and then just form a slight arch around the top then just make any final adjustments and then once this is completely bonded let it sit to completely dry so now that our piece is nice and dry we can go ahead and finish it now I decided to finish my piece with this Waverly Antique Wax. I love using this on my pre-glued projects because it doesn't, do too, it doesn't do too bad on pieces that have already been glued and that wax covers up really well. So I'm gonna start off by taking a paintbrush and getting inside and in between each one of those blocks so that wax will cover those gaps in the spaces. And then I'm gonna take a rag and then um, actually just blend in that antique wax along that bottom side of the holder, making sure you have a nice even layer 
So here's the entire bottom with that wax all covering the bottom. And now you're gonna do the inside layer of the bottom. And here's the inside layer all done. So now just complete that for the entire holder, the front, the back, and all of the edges. And then just let this piece to sit and completely dry. So now that our piece is all dry, we are going to add our hardware in order to make this a hanging piece. Now I will be applying my hardware to that second row of blocks and I'll be using these screw eye hooks. You can get these in 10 packs for a dollar at any hardware store or Walmart. Now I'm adding it to the second row at that last block and what I'm doing is taking a 1 8 inch drill bit and drilling down into that last block on the second row of blocks on the back. And as you can see, there's a tiny hole in each one of the blocks at the end on that second row. So I'm just going to start by taking that little eye hook and screwing it in using my needle nose pliers to make sure it's nice and tight in there. And you can see we have a little loop there. So go ahead and apply the other one until you have a two eye hooks there to add a chain or a rope. Now I chose to use this plat chain that I got from Dollar Tree, but you could use jute twine or any kind of string or chain that you like. And I'm just going to disconnect one of those chains and then I'm going to uh, shorten it to the length that I like and then open up one of those hooks and then I could just hook that right through that eye hook on the back of the hanger on each side. So now you could use this as a plant hanger or you can disconnect it and have it as a table decorative piece. So here is my hanging planter on display and I absolutely love how it turned out. Now I added a variety of my favorite faux succulents and they fit perfectly on this little shelf. And using this wood glue makes this piece super secure. And I love this wax finish and it always looks amazing on these wood pieces. Now, as I mentioned before, you can also remove the chain and have this as a table display. Now, I love this creative way to display these and it will fit perfectly into a corner as well. Now all you have to do is just choose your favorite decor for the tray to personalize this look. Now there's so many ways that you can customize this. Now how about just spinning it around and adding a plant as a decor accent? Now this highlights those beautiful stained block tiers. Now I just love the symmetry of this option and I had so much fun creating it. Let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. So we're going to need tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So just go ahead and start gathering up all of your supplies, including your ruler. And we first want to grab about six blocks from the container and we're going to lay them all side by side as shown here. Now we are going to be gluing these together. And for this project, again, I will be using my Gorilla Wood Glue and I'm going to glue these side by side. Now you're gonna continue to do this make sure you wipe away any excess glue and we're gonna make six of these six block sets as shown here. Now once we have all six, we are gonna join them all together side by side to make one solid platform. And I'm just gonna add some of that wood glue in between each one of them, squeezing them firmly together as I go. And then once you bond all your pieces together, just go over it with a cloth. Make sure you remove all of that glue oozing out of the seams. And then this piece is ready to go. So now we're just going to move this out of the way and let it dry. So the next set of blocks we are going to join together are sets of three tumbling tower blocks. And again, we're just going to glue these together with our wood glue. Just making sure all three are joined together nice and even. Now, once that first one is done, we are going to make five of these three block sets and here they are ready to go. Now, the last sets of blocks we're going to join together are two stacked on top of each other as shown here. So we're going to have two blocks together 
four blocks together and six blocks together to make three different heights. And uh, when we finish joining all these, we're gonna make two two block sets, two four block sets, and one six block set. Now here are all of our sets all joined together and ready to go. So now that our platform is dry and all of our pieces are dry, we can start building up our candle stand. So we're gonna find the very center of our platform and we're gonna take our longest six block set and join that in the middle. We're just gonna add a generous amount of that wood glue in the middle and stick that six block set right in the center. Now we're gonna add the four block set on each side and at the very ends of the two block set to form an arch with our candle design. We're just gonna make sure and space them evenly and I'm just kinda eyeballing this and then I'm gonna wood glue them in place and here is what it looks like before it completely sets. Now once it does set, we can start to add our platforms to the top of each one of our candle stands. And so I'm just gonna add some of that wood glue on the top of each one, and then make sure you center each one of those platforms on top of each one of those candle stands very carefully and even. And now you just wanna allow this to completely dry. Okay, now that our piece is nice and dry, we are going to start to paint it. And here it is, it's nice and solid. You really don't need any screws or hardware to, to uh, secure this. You see, I'm tossing this around, no big deal. It's really solid and this Gorilla Glue is really strong. So again, I'm going to use my black acrylic paint and I'm gonna start by painting the base of my candle stand, just making sure that I get around all of the edges and the platform as shown here. And then I'm gonna uh, paint all of the stands for each one of those candles. Again, making sure you get into all those creases so it looks like one solid piece. Now you do wanna make sure you flip it over. Make sure you get the underside of each one of those platforms as well. It just makes it look like it's so finished and so clean. So you wanna make sure you get the bottoms and the tops really even of each one. Now here is the platform all completely painted on the top. Now once the top starts to dry, you can go ahead and flip it to the bottom and paint that as well. And once you do that, your uh, project, you just wanna allow it to dry and you can decorate it. So check it out, you guys. I love how this candle stand turned out. Now I place some of my small battery operated candles on each stand that I got from Amazon, but you can get these from Dollar Tree as well. Now you can opt to also place small succulent plants on top of them as well for a different look. Now I just love the classy look of this piece and I hope that you all give it a try. Now we're gonna need some tumbling tower blocks for the Dollar Tree for this project. Now we're gonna start off with some unstained blocks for this project, and we're gonna use our carpenter square to make sure everything is even. So the first thing we're gonna do is gather up two sets of three blocks to make a six block set. And what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna make eight of these six block sets. So in order to glue these together, I'm first gonna glue three blocks together end to end. And then I'm gonna glue a second three block set end to end the same way. Now, once you have those two sets, just glue them right on top of each other. And it's very important that you make sure the ends match up and they're even. Now just place the other one on top, squeeze together, and now you have a six block set. Now you do wanna repeat this until you have eight sets. Now here are all eight sets of these six block sets that you need. And the second thing we're going to do is to make some two block sets. And this is just combining one block on top of the other. Now we're gonna do this for eight two block sets as well, and here are all of those sets ready to go. So now we're gonna take one of those six block sets and we're gonna add one of the two block sets on each end as shown here to make a U shape. So just add some hot glue to the very end and place one of those two block sets on each end. And this is what your piece will look like. And we're gonna repeat this until we have a four of these U-shaped pieces. 
Now here are all four of our U-shaped pieces and our straight pieces. So now that those are all done, we are going to be painting these. Now I'm gonna be using some black acrylic paint to paint these pieces. Now I'm just gonna apply some black acrylic paint on all of the outer surfaces of these pieces. And you just wanna make sure the end exposed areas aren't painted. They don't need to be painted. You just wanna paint the outer edges. Now here are all of our pieces painted and you wanna allow them to completely dry. So while they are drying, we're gonna work on our blocks that have, we've already pre-stained with our Jacobian Minwax stain. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna gather up about nine blocks and what we're going to do is we're gonna be bonding these all together. Now we're gonna make 12 sets of nine blocks and this will be the base for our shelving. So we're gonna start gluing these end to end on the long side. Now when you do glue these together, make sure you use a straight edge and flip your set as you go. I find that this makes your pieces a lot more even. Now here is one of our nine block sets and you wanna repeat this for 12 sets as shown here. So now we're gonna to start to put together one of our shelves. So go ahead and grab six of those sets. Now we're gonna lay them all side by side and nice and even along your straight edge. Now to adhere these together, you wanna to run a bead of hot glue along the edge and start pressing them together firmly to eliminate any gaps or air bubbles. Now you're gonna repeat this until all of those six sets are glued together and now to form one solid piece of wood. Now you're gonna repeat this for your other set until you have your two shelf pieces. So now we're gonna gather up all of our painted pieces and we can start the assembly of our shelf. So go ahead and grab one of your shelves and we're gonna grab two of the U shapes. Now we're gonna be applying those U shapes on top of the shelf and we want to apply this on that last row of blocks right in the center. Now we're gonna apply the other one at the same location on the opposite end. Now this will be the bottom of our shelf. So go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna grab our single pieces as shown here. We're gonna place one on the top of each corner, also placing it in the center of that last block on each corner. You're just gonna place some hot glue on the end and you wanna make sure the placement is in alignment with that bottom piece so it looks like a continuous piece. Now you wanna apply one to each one of the corners. So here are all of our pieces applied to the top of our shelf. So now we can add the very top layer of our shelf. We're just gonna place that right on top of those supports. Just generously add some of that hot glue right on top and add that second shelf. So there you go, it's all added and everything looks good. And now all you have to do is add your other two U pieces the same way we did as we for, did for the bottom of the shelf. And here is our shelf and it's nice and sturdy and ready to decorate. How easy was that? So here you have it, a modern two tier shelf for all of your favorite decor pieces. Now these shelves ended up being much sturdier than I thought and I test weighted them with a three pound weight on each shelf with no issue. Now you can also use wood glue as well. You just wanna make sure it fully cures before using. Now we're gonna start with those tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. Now gather up all of your table supplies and your ruler, and we are gonna start gathering our blocks to make our project. Now we're gonna do seven rows of three and six rows of two, and we are going to be alternating them as shown here. Now we won't be gluing them together in rows, we'll be gluing them on stacks as shown here. Now I did create a spacer out of two of the tumbling tower blocks and this is necessary to make sure spacing will be even on all of your rows. So just go ahead and do that before you start gluing your blocks together. And you definitely wanna use wood glue for this project since it will be a hanging project and it'll add extra strength. Now as you add and glue the blocks together, you wanna place your spacer in between them to make sure that you're getting even spacing all the way down and it'll be um, very, 
even all the way down the project. Now we're going to continue to add the rows of blocks rotating between the seven rows of three and six rows of two. Now as you continue down, make sure the sides are going to be even on each side as you go and then you will make sure that everything is nice and even and definitely use that spacer. So now that your piece is fully assembled, you want to count to make sure you have seven rows of three and six rows of two for your base sconce piece. So go ahead and just scoot this a little bit out of the way and we're going to start working on the box portion of the project. So we are going to be um, gathering up one six block set and then we're going to glue these side to side. Now you can use your wood glue or your hot glue for this since the box will be added to the sconce piece. You could use either or. You just want to make sure that they're glued side by side, flipping them as you go and just making sure they are nice and secure together with no gaps. Now here is your one six block piece ready to go. So now we're going to gather up two block sets and we're going to add it into a four block set. So we're going to need two of these total. So we're going to um, first of all add the two block sets end to end. We're going to do two of these and then once those two are glued together we're just going to stack them right on top of each other with additional hot glue and then now you have your four block set. Now just repeat this until you have a second one. So now that you have those done, we're going to go ahead and assemble our box. So gather your six block set and we're just going to place those four block sets right on the sides. So add a line of that hot glue on the side of that and press it against the four block set. Now you're just going to add one to each one of the sides. Now once that is nice and secure, we are going to add one block to the bottom just to secure it. There's going to be a tiny little gap, but no worries. This is just to keep your big stems from falling through or whatever kind of decor that you have in there. Just hot glue that into place and that will provide some security at the bottom. So now grab your base piece again and then grab your box. Now we're going to center the box on the bottom in the center. Now to make sure it's nice and even, I'm taking my pencil and I'm marking the outside edge of the box so we'll know where to glue it into place. And you can use your hot glue or wood glue to apply it to the front of your base sconce piece. Now you just want to press that securely into place and just make sure that is nice and even in the center of your base. Now you want to let that completely dry. And once that is dry, we are going to be taking our antique wax and going ahead and make sure that is nice and stained as well. Now this is a perfect time to use that paintbrush because now we can start going around the outside of the piece and inside all those little squares. I love this little brush. It's so it's very long. It actually gets in those spots without a problem. And then I follow up with my little towel, just kind of blending everything in. And once the edges and insides are done, I go over the entire piece with the towel, just evenly distributing that wax on the front and the back of the piece. And now you could just let that dry. Now once it's all dry, we are going to flip it over and add something on the back to hang it. And I'm simply going to be using a piece of jute twine. So I'm going to start by tying a knot in the end of the piece. And then what I want to do is tie an additional knot, but leave it a little loose to adjust so we can make a little loop at the top. We want to make sure our loop does not appear through the front of the piece. So we're just cutting it so that loop will just be shown on the back. So once you get the nice size that you want, just cut it down to size and now you know it fits. Now to make sure that this is nice and secure, I am going to be attaching this loop with my staple gun. I didn't want to hot glue over the wax because sometimes wax is funny when it comes to hot glue. So stapling it is the best way to go. And I'm just adding two staples to the ends of that little jute twine in the back. And now we can hang and decorate our piece. And there you have it, an adorable wall sconce with a pocket that you can hang and decorate. Now I've placed some beautiful greens inside the pocket and I love this look. Now this will be so much fun to decorate year round, especially during the holidays. Now you can make one, you can make a pair or even a trio of these sconces. It's all up to you and they are so easy to make.
Now we're going to need some tumbling tower blocks on the Dollar Tree. So go ahead and grab up your supplies and that carpenter square and all of your blocks. Now the first set of blocks we will be joining together are sets of four as shown here in a rectangular shape. And what we're going to end up making are six sets of these. So you can go ahead and use the glue of your choice. And for this project, I am going to be using the wood stick hot glue. So to join these together, I'm just going to join two blocks at the end of one block as shown here to form the rectangular shape. And then once those two blocks are joined, I'm just going to add that last one at the end and close it up. Now we're going to repeat this until we have a six total block sets. Now the next set of blocks we will be making are sets of 10 blocks in a row. And we're going to end up making three of these. Now for these, I'm just going to glue them side by side as shown here. And as I glue these, I like to flip them over. This tends to keep them nice and even and keep them from curving. So I just add one block at a time, adding that glue on the side and wiping it away as you go. Now here is one of the 10 block sets and you're going to repeat this until you have a total of three. So now what we're going to do is take our 10 block sets and we're going to actually join these together side by side to make one solid piece. Just add a line of that woodstick hot glue on that end and then press it firmly next to the next one. And then we just add that last row on there as well to make one solid piece. Now this solid piece will be the bottom of our square tray. Now I wanted to put little legs on this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to form legs with the tumbling tower blocks and all I'm going to do on each corner is form an L shape as shown here. Now once they look like you want them to look, go ahead and add some of that wood stick hot glue on the end and press it firmly into place. Now the second part of the L, you want to add it to the bottom and the side so they actually connect in two places and then press it into place. Now you want to repeat this all the way around the bottom of your tray. And so here's what the bottom will look like. So now we're going to take our rectangular pieces and this will be the decorative accent for our tray. So we're going to grab two of the rectangles and what we want to do is put one tumbling tower block in between them. Just add some wood stick hot glue in between them. Make sure that piece is nice and centered in between them as shown here. Now once you make this one, you're going to repeat this another time so you have a total of two. Now for these last two blocks, what we're going to do is put a block on each side. I'll refer to them as arms. So we're going to put two arms on each one of those blocks. Again, we want to make sure they are nice and centered. And once that first one is done, just repeat that for a second one for a total of two. So now that our pieces are made for our tray, we can start assembling it. So we're going to start with the top part of our tray. We're going to grab one of those two block assembly pieces and the piece with the arms. We're just going to add some hot glue to the end of one of the pieces with the arms and just butt it up to that corner of that two block set as shown here. Now once that's adhered, go ahead and rotate it around and we can add another one of these two piece rectangular pieces. Just make sure you add some of that hot glue to the end of the other side of that arm piece. And then once you do that, you could just press it up to that two rectangular piece as shown here. And now that you have the three sides, just add the two piece arm set right there in between it to close everything in. And here is what everything all adhered will look like. So now that all of our pieces are done, we can now paint them. So what I decided to do for the top part of the tray is to paint with my metallic gold spray, uh, actually the acrylic paint for this one, and then the bottom of the tray will be the black acrylic paint. So I'm going to start by painting the bottom of the tray and this will be black. So I just want to start by painting the underside of the tray. Now this is completely optional, but I do like all the sides of my projects to be completed. It just makes it look more professional. So I'm going to apply one coat of that acrylic paint all over the bottom. Then flip it over and add it to the top. And here is what the piece will look like. 
And then for our top piece, I am going in with my metallic gold acrylic paint. And I'm going to paint this on, starting on the inside of it first. So I like to start on the inside of it and make sure I get inside all of those little triangular or little rectangular pieces as well on the inside. And then I like to put a coat on the outside. Now I did put about two coats on this, letting them dry in between the coats. And here is what it looks like. So now that both pieces are dry, we're ready to adhere them. Now notice the bottom of the tray. I did not paint the bottoms of the blocks because I want them to adhere to the tray without the paint on them. So on those raw bottom ends, I'm just gonna add some of this wood stick hot glue and I'm just gonna add a line on the bottom of each one of those raw bottoms on the bottom of that upper tray piece and then press that right on top of the tray. Now this should fit perfectly on top. Now you just wanna gently press it into place and make sure it's nice and secure. And here is your little tray. I just think it's adorable. Now all you have to do is decorate your adorable little tray with whatever you like. Now I place succulents in my tray and it really looks so sweet with the gold and black trim. Now there are so many ways to decorate these too, and you can use it in so many different spaces in your home. Now I'm so in love with this piece and I can't wait to make it in more in different colors. Now for this project, we're gonna be using some of these tumbling tower wood blocks from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna lay out my silicone sheer bonder mat and grab my tumbling blocks. Now I've already gone ahead and stained all my blocks with my Jacobian Min Wax stain, but this is an option if you would like to do that. I'm also gonna be using my carpenter square ruler that I also got from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna lay out all of my blocks and I'm just gonna kind of form a six block stack. And I think this is gonna be one side of my box. So I'm gonna be making four six block sets. Now we will be bonding these together with my Sure Bonder glue gun using my wood stick hot glue. Just apply a line of that hot glue along the side and you wanna bond each one of those pieces together. Now as you bond these, you do wanna flip the set over and what this does is ensure that they're completely even and that they won't be wavy when you're finished. Believe me, it does work. So here is a six block set and continue this until you have all four sets completed. And so the next set we are going to make, we're gonna stack up five blocks and we are gonna be making two sets of the five blocks. And here are my five block sets all done. And then finally, we're gonna make some two block sets and we are going to make four sets of two blocks. And here are all of my two block sets all glued together and ready to go. Now we're first gonna start working on the base of our container. So what we wanna do is adhere two of the six block sets together and we're just gonna apply some of that wood stick hot glue right down the center and glue them both together. Now once the base is completed, you wanna grab another one of those six block sets and we're gonna just place it along the side of the base as shown here. Now, once you determine the placement, just add some of that wood stick hot glue to the bottom of that six block set and apply it to the base, making sure you wipe away any glue that oozes out. And so now we're gonna grab one of the five block sets and we wanna just butt that right up to the six block set along the other side and just apply some hot glue along the side and the bottom of that piece to secure it in place. Now we're gonna add that other five block set on the opposite side of the first one. We're gonna butt that up again, add that hot glue along the side and the bottom, and we're gonna secure that into place as well. Now once all three of those pieces are in place, we're gonna add our final six block set. And once it looks good, just add that hot glue to the bottom and the inside of both ends, and then secure that right into place on the end. And you just wanna make sure that everything is nice and even. So 
So everything does look good and our box is completed. So now we're gonna work on the bottom for the pedestal. This is where those two block sets come into play. So here I'm just determining how I want my block sets to look. And once I decide upon a look, I can go ahead and adhere that together. So I'm just gonna glue two pieces together along the end and I'm just gonna bond them into place to form like an L shape. Now once that first L shape is done, I'm just gonna go to the opposite side and I wanna top it off with another one of those two block sets. And finally, I'm gonna add that last piece in between that open gap. Now in retrospect, I should have just gone around in a clockwise motion, but squeezing it in between the two blocks wasn't that hard, but going clockwise may be a little bit easier, but it did end up being nice and secure. So now that that piece is done, we're just gonna center this right on the bottom of the base of our planter box. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a generous amount of that glue around the edge and press it right down into the center of the bottom. You just wanna press it firmly into place to make sure it is secure. And now our box is all bonded together. Now once you complete that, I'm just gonna go in with the remaining bit of my stain and I'm just gonna go ahead and stain all the end pieces of my blocks. And I don't originally stain these because sometimes my blocks are bonded end to end and they bond better when they're not stained. But just in case in instances like this, it's good to go in and now you could just go ahead and just stain all the edges and here is the box all done. So now all you have to do is take your remaining blocks and make an additional one to make a set. So now that the additional box is made and all the stain is now dry, you can decorate your pieces. Now, I'm just gonna take some rocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna fill each one halfway with some of these white rocks and then place a succulent inside of the center. Now this is just so simple and easy, but a nice elegant look, I really love it. And here are the completed containers on display. Now I think that they turned out absolutely adorable. Now I love this look with the succulents and the rocks and it really kind of gives me those calming spa vibes. And the blocks are always great with the stain and look amazing in this project. Now you don't have to limit yourself with succulents, you can add flowers or other greenery too. Now also another great option could be candles. Now I love the way these look in these displays. Now of course I would not light real candles in these but the battery operated candles would be perfect. You all have to let me know in the comments how would you use these to decorate in your home. Now we're gonna need these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. So gather up your tools and your ruler and your blocks. Now we're gonna start with making um, two block sets and we are going to make a total of 12 of these. Now I will be using my Surebonder wood stick hot glue to make these and I'm going to be bonding two end to end until I have 12 total sets. Now the next set of blocks we will be joining together is a seven block set and I'm going to need two of these. So I'm gonna be bonding these side to side and squeezing them together. Now you guys know I love to rotate my pieces. I get a lot of questions on that and I find that flipping and rotating them keeps them nice and even and prevents that waviness that you get when you glue them all together. And here is one of the seven block pieces all done and just repeat it until you have two. So now we can start assembling our little planter lantern. So we're gonna grab two of those two block sets and then grab three loose blocks. Now we're gonna be bonding them as shown here. Now I like to start by bonding the two end pieces first and just making sure they are nice and square, making sure you use your ruler. Now once your two end pieces are nice and even, take that third loose uh, block and then place it right in the center. So once those three are on top, add another two piece set right on top to close that in. Just add a bead of hot glue right on top of those three pieces and press that two block piece on top. And now we're gonna grab three more loose blocks and place them in place and hot glue those the same way. 
And once those are in place, just close that in with a two block set. And now we have one of the sides of our little planter lantern and we're gonna need a total of four as shown here. So now what I'm going to do is I will be bonding these side to side as shown here, but I do want to make a mark where they bond together because I will be putting a screen layer on the inside and I don't want the screen to interfere with the adhesion area of the side. So just go around each one of those panels and make a mark so you know how to cut your screen. Now I'm going to be using this gutter guard mesh or you can use a Dollar Tree trash can or Dollar Tree basket, but I love using this gutter guard mesh. I get it from the rain gutter section of the hardware store and and this works as great screening for your projects. Now all you're going to do is you're going to cut a piece that will cover up the openings in each one of your panels and you're just going to trim all the sides down keeping, keeping in mind your marks that you made for your side panel attachments and making sure that screen doesn't interfere with that. Now once you have the size you need just cut four more pieces so you'll have four screens for each one of your panels. So now we're going to start to adhere them together and I like to start with one bead of the hot glue down one of the sides and pressing it into place just to lock in that one side. Now once that's all locked in, I just rotate it around. I'm going to pull the screen back and I'm going to continue to add that hot glue around the frame and down the center to make sure it's all in place. Now to get a nice tight bond, I'm just going to be flipping up my silicone mat and pressing it on top. But if you get one of those silicone pot holders from the Dollar Tree, that will work as well. Now here's one all bonded together and we're just going to repeat this for our other screens until we have all four with the screen on the inside. So now what we're going to do is to start bonding the sides together. Now I'm just going to place the edge on top of the edge here and then I'm going to add a generous layer of that wood stick hot glue on top and then press that piece in place making sure these screen sides are on the inside. Then rotate that around and add your second side. Now once you have all three sides and it's nice and even, you can finally add the top. Just add a couple lines of that wood stick hot glue along the opening and press that last corner or last screen side in place. So now you have your lantern planter base and you are ready to go. So now grab those two seven block sets and we are going to join those together right down the center. Just add a bead of hot glue and squeeze those two together. Now this will form the perfect size for the bottom. So we're just going to be placing that right on the bottom and then just add a bead around the hot, of hot glue around the opening and then you can press the bottom of it right into place. And there we go, our lantern planter box is all assembled. Now I did want to add some feet to my box. So I have some of these beads. These are 16 millimeter beads that I got from Amazon. I'll go ahead and link them in the description box for you guys if interested. I'm just going to place one of them in each one of the bottom corners of the box. And there you have it. We have our little feet. Now we just wait till everything completely dries. And to finish this off, we're sticking with our theme using our Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just going to be applying this with a combination of a little towel and my paintbrush. Now I'm going to start on the inside with my long brush, just staining the inside and along all the edges. Now I know that some people ask, why do I stain after I glued it together? Well, you know, sometimes the hot glue does not bond well to the wax coating. So I'd like to stain after I actually bond everything together wood to wood so the wax coating doesn't get in the way. So once we do the inside, we are going to do the outside, making sure you get the inside edges of those windows and around all of the trims. And now you're just gonna continue this for the entire box on all sides, the inside and the bottom. And then finally, you do wanna go through and wipe off all the screens just in case you got any wax on them. It should wipe away fairly easily. And now just let your piece to completely dry. And here is my little window lantern and I think it turned out adorable. Now I placed some battery tea lights in the bottom and I love this beautiful glow. 
Now I think the little screening does give it a unique look too. Now if you like, you can add a piece of Dollar Tree chopping mat to the windows too and it actually softens up the look of the candles. Now you can also use this box as a planter. Now you could just add a plant to it as well and I love the greenery at Dollar Tree. It always works so well in my DIYs. <laughs> some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and we're also going to need some cork craft sticks from Lowe's and these were 98 cents. Now we are going to start our project working with our tumbling tower blocks. So our first set of blocks will be eight count blocks and we will be making a total of five sets of these blocks. Now make sure you use your ruler or carpenter square to join these together. Now we are going to be joining these blocks side by side, just making sure that they are nice and even and square. Make sure you wipe away that hot glue and make sure you flip them as you go. Now here is one eight block set ready to go and now repeat this until you have a total of five. Now the next set of blocks we are going to be working on are three block sets and we're going to make four of these. Now these will be joined end to end. Just go ahead and apply those and make sure you wipe away the glue and this is especially important since this will definitely be showing in the project. Now we're going to make a total of four and here are all four ready to go. So now we're going to start to bond our eight block sets together to form the tray level. Now we're just going to lay them out side by side and then add some of that Sherbonder wood stick hot glue in between each one of the sets, pressing them firmly together as you go. You just want to make sure that they are nice and even. Using that square definitely helps and make sure the blocks are nice and even. And here is your one solid piece of wood from your blocks. Now this is totally optional, but I wanted to add craft sticks on top of my blocks because I was going for more of a plank look rather than a block look. And I'm just going to add these across the top of my blocks. So what I want to do is just start adding my craft sticks right across the top of the blocks by just adding a row of that hot glue and then pressing those craft sticks right in place. Now you just wanna start tiling them together right on top of each other, adding your hot glue as you go, and just make sure you choose craft sticks that are not bowed or irregular, and this will prevent gaps from forming in your tile. Now here is the entire set of blocks tiled with those craft sticks, and I used about 10 for this project. Now we're just gonna go ahead and trim off those ends, and I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife. All I'm gonna do is I am just gonna score it three or four times, and then the ends should snap right off. Now if you don't have an X-Acto knife, you can definitely use a utility knife as well. Now we're just gonna repeat this for the other side. So now we have a solid tiled plank for our tray. So now I wanted to go ahead and paint my tray and I am going to be painted with black acrylic. Now of course you can stain as well, but I wanted it to be black to resemble a project that I saw or an item that I saw on a high-end store. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint the entire top black first, let that dry, and then I'm going to go ahead and paint the sides and the back. And here is my piece all painted and we want to make sure that this completely dries. So while that dries, we are going to be working on our bar handle for the tray. So I'm just going to take that three block set and then I'm going to add one block at each end. Now it's important that when you add that one block at each, each end, you're going to make sure it's slightly offset, meaning it's not going to be even with the end. It's going to kind of overlap the end because that will enable it to fit on that tray right on top. So we're going to add another one to the end, offsetting it as shown here, and then just adding some hot glue to the block and placing it in place. Now here is my set and you can see the slight offset. So now we're going to take another three block set and place it right on top, just making sure that that offset that we applied is applied to this side as well. And now that it's all glued together, you can see the design and the slight offset on each side. And we're going to repeat this for your other three block sets and one block. And here are the two sides that we will need for our handles for our tray. 
Now I'm gonna take this outside and give it two coats of this Brilliant Gold Spray Paint by Krylon. You can use any color you want, but Brilliant Gold will work for my project. So now that our tray is dry and our handles are dry, we can actually start to apply these. So you see the tray now fits inside that handle perfectly. If you had lined those ends up, it really wouldn't have fit. So now they fit perfectly. Now to apply our little handles to our tray, I'm gonna add a generous amount of hot glue on the bottom side of that handle part and I'm gonna stick that tray right inside and press it down. Now to make sure it's nice and even, go ahead and flip the tray over and you want it to be a half an inch to three quarter of an inch from the side. Now when you add your second one, we're gonna apply the glue the same way, slide that tray in and go ahead and flip it over. Do make sure that it's the same distance as the other one so it would look nice and even. And now here is our tray all added, all glued together and now you're ready to decorate. Now here is my cute little tray on display and I think it's so perfect for my vanity setup. Now I simply added a few fragrance bottles on this tray and it would be a cute way to display them on top of a bath vanity. Now I am really loving the gold accent handles on this tray and with the black it resembles a piece that I did see online for so much more. You have to let me know what cute items would you display on your tray? Gonna need some tumbling tower blocks in a Dollar Tree, some quart craft sticks from Lowe's, and these were 98 cents. And we'll also need some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna work with our tumbling tower blocks first in our carpenter square, and we're gonna add um, a five block set down on the mat. Now what we're gonna end up doing is making six of these five block sets, and to glue these together, we are gluing them flat end to end. Now again, you do want to make sure you flip them as you go and wipe away any hot glue because it gives you a nice professional look. Now here is one of the block sets done and we're going to continue this until we have six. Now the next set of blocks are a set of three blocks and we're going to glue these end to end as well the same way we did for the first time and then, we're, and then just wipe away any of that hot glue that oozes out of the seams. Now after we complete one, we're gonna continue this until we have a total of four. Now the final block set is a two block set and this is gonna be end to end as well and we're gonna make a total of six of these. So the first thing we're gonna do is once all those pieces are done, we're gonna take one of those five block sets and one of those two block sets and we're gonna join them together to form an L shape. Just add hot glue to the end of that two block set and press it firmly into place. And then I'm just gonna flip it over and add another two block set on the other end of that five block set. Now once those are bonded, I'm gonna take a second five block set and I'm gonna add that to the bottom. Now we're just gonna add some hot glue to the ends there and once this is all bottom, all glued together at the bottom, um, we'll have a rectangular shape and this will be one of the shapes that we'll make for our planter box and this, we're gonna make this into uh, a total of three with the remaining blocks that we have. So now that we have all three, grab one of those rectangular boxes and we're gonna start adding those three piece block sets in each corner. Just go ahead and add some hot glue around the bottom edge of each one of those three block sets and place it in the corner of your rectangle. Now once all four of these are added, this will form the base of our box. So now we're gonna add that second row of blocks. We're just gonna slide that right over the top and we want this to be right in the center of that three piece block set. Now once you eyeball it and get the center, I'm just gonna add just a line of hot glue down the center of that middle block there and then slide the entire shape down onto the top of that glue and then press it firmly into place until it bonds. You wanna make sure you wipe away anything that oozes out of that seam and then just flip it over and make sure you glue it on the other side as well. 
Now, once that middle one is nice and firm into place, we're just gonna add that top one into place, making sure it's even with the top of that those three block sets, and then glue those into place as well. And here is our outline of our crate, and it turned out perfect. So now I'm gonna grab about 10 sticks of our craft sticks and I'm gonna be staining these with the antique wax. Now I'm gonna be using these for the bottom of my crate. You don't really need to stain the entire stick but I am staining both sides just for the areas that will actually cover the bottom of the crate which is actually shorter than the stick. Now here are all of our sticks stained and I'm gonna sit those to the side to dry. So once those are dry, we can go ahead and we are going to work on our crate and we're going to actually be painting this with some white chalk paint. I like to start on the inside of the crate first. I just find it easier. Go ahead and get the inside uh, knocked out first and then I would do the outside and the edges. Now here is our crate all nice and painted and we want this to completely dry. All right, so here is our crate all nice and dry. So now we can continue working on the bottom of our crate and now our craft sticks are nice and dry. Now I'm just gonna lay one of those craft sticks across the bottom and I'm gonna mark the edges with a pencil to see how much I need to cover that crate. I'm gonna trim off all of the excess and you notice we don't even need those ends that we didn't stain so we are good to go. Now once we have a piece that will cover the entire length of that crate, I'm going to use this piece as a template and I'm just going to trace the outline of that first piece on the remaining pieces of my craft sticks just to make sure I cut them all to the same length. Now here are all my craft sticks nice and cut and I'm going to start adhering them to the bottom of our crate. Now for the end piece, I'm just going to add hot glue to each one of the ends and I'm also going to add it along the edge so it's nice and bonded to the bottom of the crate. And then I'm going to take the next one and all I have to do with this one is add the hot glue to the top and the bottom, press it nice and snug in place next to the next one. Now we're just going to continue this all the way down until the entire bottom is covered with those craft sticks. All right, so now that that's done, I wanted to add a little accent. So I'm gonna use some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to add handles to my crate. So I'm just kind of eyeballing how long I want my handles to be and I think it was about four inches. So I'm gonna cut it to length and I wanna add hot glue to the ends just to make sure that it doesn't fray. Then I'm going to use this piece to cut another piece so it's the same exact length and then add hot glue to those ends as well. Now I wanted to add another accent to my rope so I have some of this wire that I got from the hardware section of Dollar Tree and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this wire around each end of one of my ropes and it just creates a little metallic accent that I think looks really nice and gives it a little high-end look so I wrap it around and then I kind of just clamp it a little bit with my um, pliers and then clip off that wire and I just think that it looks very high end with this little metallic accent. You're going to do this for both ends of your ropes for both sides of your, um, your handles for your crate. Now once you decide your placement, add a generous amount of that wood stick hot glue to the crate and press the end of that rope in place and then repeat that on the other side until everything is nice, secure, and bonded. And now just repeat this process for the other side of your crate. Now here is our crate with both of those handles in place and I am loving this look. So all you have to do now is place your crate where you like and add your decorations of your choice. Now I just love how this turned out. Now I've added some little mason jars filled with clover flowers and I think this looks so sweet. Now you can use any filler that you like for your little mason jars. And I really love these little handles with the metallic accent. Now if you only want greenery, you can scratch the mason jars and just add some directly to your crates. Now 
Now this will add just a touch of color and it maintains that neutral look. Now you can mix your greenery with candles too. Now of course you would want to use battery candles, but I hope that this idea is helpful. Now, I absolutely love being able to create these DIYs with so many uses, and I really hope that you have fun with these projects. And as always, I love them all, but you all have to let me know in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite today. Listen, I hope that you all enjoyed seeing these creations again, or for some of you, for the very first time. I hope that you all are inspired to create your own tumbling tower block creations using the different supplies from the Dollar Tree presented in this video. Now, if you love DIYs on a budget, just give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She So Craft DE on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you are subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.